Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. Today we're covering Chapter 2, Section 1 of Basic Mathematics by Sergey Lang. And uh, we're going to learn how to solve two equations at the same time. And with two equations, you should be able to solve two variables. So here's how you do that. I'm going to show you by example. So suppose you have two equations, and let's use a light blue here. Uh, 1 is 2x plus y is equal to 1. And the other equation says 3x minus 2y is equal to 4. Okay, now if you've been doing the homework exercises, you know how to solve a single equation with a single unknown, but solving for two equations at the same time with two variables is, is going to be a new technique for you. Thankfully, it's not that difficult, so let's walk through the process. The first thing we want to do is we want to add or subtract these equations to each other so we can get a variable all by itself. And uh, the way you do that is you try to get the number of x's at the top and the number of x's on the bottom to be the same. In order to do that, we're going to notice that 2 times 3 is 6 and 3 times 2 is 6. So we're going to multiply the top equation by 3. So we're going to take all of this and multiply it by 3. And then take all of this and multiply it by 3 as well. Let's write the 3 this, this way. And this equation we're going to multiply by 2. Okay. Now, if you're wondering why we're allowed to multiply both sides of the equations by a certain number, the answer has to do with... Uh, when we were studying rational numbers and um, cross multiplication and simplification. So I'm not going to get into that. Just you're multiplying both sides by 3. That's the way I think about it. That's the way you should think about it. So the top equation becomes, if we distribute this 3 out, we get 6x. 3 times 2x is 6. And then we get 3y. That's a distribution rule. So the 3 has to distribute to both terms. And on the other side, we get a 3 by itself. And on this side, we get a 6x. And we get a minus 4y. Again, we're distributing this 2 to both terms. And then on the other side, we get 8. Now, if we were to add these equations together, we'd get 12x. But we're going to subtract one from the other. So we're going to subtract the second equation from that one. So I could write it this way. And of course, we have to put a minus sign in front of that 8 as well. So 6x minus 6x is 0x. 3y minus minus 4y is the same as adding 3 and 4 together. That's 7y. And then we have 3 minus 8, which is minus 5. Okay, so simplify that, we get 7y is equal to minus 5, and then we can move the 7 downstairs on the other side, and so we get y is equal to minus 5 sevenths. Okay, now that we know what y is, we can plug this back into one of the original equations. And he is going to use, um, using 1, which well, he's going to use the first equation, so let's plug that in. So we get 2x plus y is equal to 1. So let's plug in uh, 2x plus minus 5 sevenths is equal to 1. Let's move it to the other side so it becomes positive. So 1 plus 5 sevenths. And so that's the same as 1 plus 5 sevenths is just 12 sevenths, I believe. 12 sevenths. Because 1 is 7 sevenths and 7 plus 5 is, yeah. Okay, and then we divide by 2. We move the 2 to downstairs. So we get 12 over 2 times 7. We notice that there's a common factor. This is 6 times 2 on the top. So we can cancel out the 2. So we get 6 over 7. So x is equal to 6 sevenths. Okay. Now, whenever you're solving these problems, there's a good chance you made a mistake somewhere. So you should always, always, always check your work. Let's use this light green color that's probably difficult to see on the camera. And if it is, you can sue me. Okay. All right. So we have the original equation was 2x plus y is equal to 1. And the other one was 3x minus 2y is equal to 4. So let's take the first one. So 2 times 6 sevenths plus minus 5 sevenths has to equal 1. So this is 12 sevenths minus 5 sevenths. And does 12 minus 5 sevenths equal 1? Well, indeed, that's 7 sevenths. I'm sorry, this is a single 7 under the denominator there. That is 7 sevenths, which is indeed equal to 1. The second equation, 3 times 6 sevenths minus 2 times minus 5 sevenths has to equal 4. So this is 3 times 6 is 18 sevenths. A minus times a minus is a plus. So that's plus 10 sevenths. So we get 28 over 7. Is that supposed to equal 4? Indeed, that is equal to 4. So that checks out as well. So these are the two numbers that work for this equation. In fact, these are the only two numbers that work. So x equals minus 5 sevenths and y equals 6 sevenths are the only solutions for these particular equations. Um, if we wanted to, um, 
oh, we could have done this another way. So there's more than one way to skin this cat. So let's take a look at another way to do this. We have 2x plus y is equal to 1, and we have 3x minus 2y is equal to 4. That was the original equations, I believe. Yes. Now, instead of Instead of solving uh, by eliminating x first, let's try to eliminate y first. And what we'll do is multiply the top by 2, and then we'll add the two equations together. So 2 times 2 is 4 minus 3. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7x. 2 times y is 2y minus 2y is 0y. I just won't write anything. And then we have 2 times 1 plus 4 is 6. So x is equal to 6, 7. So right away, we've already got one value. Okay. Let's plug this in. Uh, let's do this one because it's simpler. So we have 2 times 6 sevenths plus y has to equal 1. And then we have 12 sevenths plus y is equal to 1. Move the 12 sevenths to the other side. So y equals 1 minus 12 sevenths. So it's 7 minus 12 sevenths, which is 5, minus 5 sevenths. And that's the same answer we got before. So you could solve this equation any number of ways. There's multiple paths to the solution. And it's up to you. It's a matter of taste. You know, if, if you want to go one way or the other, it's up to you which way you want to go. Um, moving right along, let's do another system of equations. I'll use a different color for this. I'm going to write it over here on the left. Let's use brown. Brown is nice. OK. So this, this system of equations says that 2x minus y is equal to 5, and 2x minus y is equal to 7. Now, he makes a comment, obviously this has no solution. If you have a difficulty seeing why it has no solution, look at this 2x minus y part. This is exactly the same on both the top and the bottom equations, except in this case it's equal to 5, and in this case it's equal to 7. So this is clearly a contradiction, so there is no solution. Don't even bother wasting your time. You already know that you can't solve an equation that way. Um, another system of equations he gives, let's use a different color for this, let's use orange. Ooh, this is like a tangerine, it's like a yellowy orange. And I don't think I've ever used it before, it's very tight. Okay, 2x minus y is equal to 5, and 6x minus 3y is equal to 7. Okay? Now this one uh, has no solution either. Okay? The reason why is if you look at this, this, this equation here, You'll see that you have 2x and 6x. You have y and 3y. I hope that shows up okay. That does not show up okay on the camera. Let's change the color to a green. Okay, so we have 2x minus y, and we have 6x minus 3y. This is going to be 5, and this is going to be 7. But you can see that if you multiply the top by 3, you'd get the bottom equation. So this top equation, if you multiply both sides by 3, you're going to get 6x minus 3y is equal to 15 right? And now we see that 6x minus 3y down here is 7, but up here it's 15. There is no solution here either. Okay, so sometimes it's not immediately obvious, but you'll notice that what happens when you have uh, no solutions is you'll have basically the same left side equals the right side. Moving on, um, we have um, he, he divides, in his example in the book, he divides this side by 3, so he gets 7 thirds. He said 2x minus y is equal to 7 thirds. You can do that either. All right, now, at this point, he says we don't want to kill the horse by beating on it too much here. This is a technique for solving certain kinds of equations, two equations with two unknowns. There is actually a very uh, deep topic you can study into. You can start abstracting out these equations. You can use matrices. You can do all kinds of stuff. There's actually three possible solutions. One is that there is no solution. There's uh, a specific solution, x, y. x is a specific value, y is a specific value. And the last is that they're actually the same line. There's a, there's a, a linear solution. Um, we're not going to really dive into that too much. What you'll notice, though, is as you try to solve it, you're going to run into problems. Okay? In this case, if you naively said, well, I'm going to take uh, these two equations and I'm going to add, uh, subtract them from each other, you've got 2x minus y is equal to 5 minus 2x minus y is equal to minus 7. And when you try to subtract those two together, you're going to get 0, 0 is equal to minus 2. And so you get 0 equals minus 2, which is complete nonsense, right? 0 and minus 2 are two different numbers. And so that's one way you can tell that it doesn't have a solution, is you just naively try to approach the equation, you'll find that you can't do it. And so in that case, um, you can say that this, these, these solutions are nonsense. Now, why am I teaching, why is he saying, hey, 
Let's do two equations and two unknowns before we even know what a real number is. The answer for that is it's very simple to solve many kinds of problems using two equations with two unknowns. So he gives an example in the book of how to solve one of these problems that you've seen earlier using equations of multiple multiple equations of multiple unknowns. So the example says this. So a person takes a trip and drives eight hours. So he drives eight hours, a distance of 400 miles. So that's how long he has driven. So when he's driving on the freeway, he's driving at 60 miles per hour on the freeway. And he's driving 30 miles per hour average through the town. So in the town, in town. All right. And the question is, how long did he drive Did he drive through towns on his trip, right? So we're going to say x is the time spent on freeways. And y is the time spent in town. And so we get this equation. We say x plus y has to equal 8. And that's a really simple equation. So he didn't spend his time anywhere else but on the freeway or in town. And then the second equation we can get from this is 60x plus 30y. That's the amount of distance he traveled through freeways. And this is the amount of distance he traveled through towns is equal to 400. Okay. He takes the first one, he multiplies by 60. And 60 times 8 is 480. Then he subtracts the second equation. Then he adds those two together. These two terms cancel. You get 60 minus 30, which is 30. And 480 minus 40, this is 80. So y is 8 thirds. That's how much time he spent on the, in the towns. And so you can solve for the, number, the amount of time he spent on the freeways, because x plus y has to equal 8. So x is equal to 8 minus y, which is 8 minus 8 thirds, which is 24 thirds minus 8 thirds, which 24 minus 8 is, uh, oh gosh, 16. That sounds about right, 16 thirds. Yeah. But this is, the, this is the, the question they were trying to answer. The problem was asking how long did he spend in towns, and there's your answer. right? You didn't even have to solve for x if you didn't want to. So we have solved this equation rather simply, and hopefully elegantly. You can see the elegance of this kind of solution, of this way of approaching the problem, where we're taking simple statements from the problem. We're not really applying much thought. We're just basically writing down an equation form what the problem itself is stating. And then we're solving for multiple equations uh, with multiple variables. Let's talk a little bit about how to solve the problems. Homework help. Um, so exercises 1 through 8 are pretty straightforward. Remember, just follow the technique where you try to eliminate one of the variables by multiplying and adding the two rows together. And A, B, C, D, A, D, blah, 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 blah. Okay, number 9 is going to be interesting because you're not using numbers for the coefficients of the variables anymore. Um, it won't be a problem, though. Let me, uh, I won't actually work through it. Just, you know, your answer is going to have A, B, C, Ds in it. And um, you'll get solutions for X in terms of A, B, C, and D. And you'll notice that there's a pattern to it. And, um, okay, also, uh, you might be tempted to divide by AD minus BC, but remember, you can't do that unless it's equal to zero. Thankfully, he says in problem nine that we can assume that those are equal to zero, not equal to zero, so that you can divide. All right, number 10. Um, there's a generic solution for an equation where everything's equal to zero. Very straightforward, pretty easy. And number 11, there is another generic solution, uh, solution for when they're equal to, you know, non-zero numbers, which, again, is pretty straightforward. So hopefully you'll have fun, and, and if you pay attention to 9, 10, and 11, you're going to get a generic solution for all equations of two unknowns, okay, with some simple rules of thumb to take a look at. And uh, you can think about in exercises 9, 10, and 11 why it is that AD minus BC cannot be equal to zero, and what it means when those two numbers are equal to zero when those two numbers subtracted from each other equals zero. So there's not much else to say on this section. I hope you guys enjoy the homework and take some time to think about it. Uh, this is more of a technique chapter, not so much theory, uh, but this is a very powerful technique that we use again and again. So hopefully you're going to add to your arsenal of algebra and you'll be able to tackle more complicated problems in the future. Thanks for your time. Take care and bye-bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. This video is part of my series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can click here to watch the rest of the videos in the playlist. You can click here to learn more about me, and you can click here to support my channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.